You ever seen the movie Heat before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This makes me think about this is the second time I've thought about it in recent um, times, but you know, like um, the cop is telling the, the 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 cop is saying, "Hey, you can make mistakes, or no, I can make mistakes. Doesn't matter if I catch you or not. Like I'm gonna go home at night. Yeah, you make one mistake and it's game over. Yeah, yeah. and and that's what I think of. You know, the enemy in that situation." They don't have to take very big risks at all. Mm-hmm. They can lob shit at you yep. from wherever, and they just have to get lucky one time. That's it to get a guy. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to be vigilant all the time, and you got to keep your guard up all the time. And even if you keep your guard up all the time, you're still just exposed just by the nature of the fact that you're in a valley surrounded by indirect fire or direct fire in terms of rockets. Yeah, yeah. Our strategy in that fire base um, was a test bed for creativity um we built a mosque like i physically built a mosque with my hands my oda brick by brick helped build a mosque why because we wanted to build rapport with having a place of worship inside of our fire base for our afghans but it also deterred indirect fire because no terrorist wanted to be responsible for dropping a mosque in the middle of an american fire base like we had to think outside the box and um, we truly were set up almost for failure in that circumstance, but every fire base had to hold its territory. Uh, before VSO, where village stables, uh, stabilization operations, where you're setting up in the actual village, the idea of fire bases derived from obviously from Vietnam era, from John Schreiker Meyer era of, hey, let's go out, set out these bases and establish a presence. And so we were present and the bad guys knew about it. And it was, uh, uh, sharp learning curve, steep learning curve, to say the least. Where are you getting food from? Uh, typically, uh, in initially, we were flying it in until we started getting creative. Uh, we built a a bread house where we were making footbread, Afghan footbread, in the middle of our fire base. Then we started procuring goats and sheep and then slaughtering them and then eating them and then rice. And we were getting uh, supplies from Pakistan because uh, it was right across the border and bringing it in to, to make actually good meals versus the mermite chow that we're getting. That was garbage, dude. <laughs> it was disgusting. Did you, uh, did you take any casualties from all those attacks? Yeah, I mean, we've had, we had wounded in action. We had killed in action on our company. Um, we, you know, during the mid-range, um, which was, we just had the anniversary of Operation Red Wings, uh, which was the 28th of June. Um, we got hit up for that mission task with that. With that. Um, Camp Vance, which was in Bagram, kind of assembled the quick reaction force that eventually went out and lost one of the birds, uh, the MH-47s that were shot down. So we did QRF for that, um, did some big operations in what Kotya Valley near Barakout, and uh, took casualties. We lost the MH-47 during that trip, um, pretty expensive bird. But it was, I mean, it was overall, it was a good trip. I mean, our, our fire bases were successful in disrupting the enemy, but we just started over, man. De- the, the detriment to warfare is this vicious cycle. And when you take a playbook and you plan the playbook, but you don't put in the same continuity pieces to establish a long-term relationship, you just start the vicious cycle all over again. Every detachment commander, every team sergeant wants their mark in history on that battleground and it doesn't do well long term in, in, in warfare which is obviously where the, the point we're at today i mean pulling out of afghanistan 